Super Blonde Wave, I'm Eric. I'm Rick. And I'm Aaron. And we're back with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Last time on, we increased efficiency in the office. We did. Uh, as much as we could. We convinced Santiago to stay at the Nine-Nine. And we beat Major Crimes. Was I a, mean, the Vulture. There was a lot of tear gas. I was tearing up. True. And we, well, and we stopped him from stealing a case, which is great. And we beat the fire department. And they solved another case football. about the neighbor murder. Yes, that was a whole one we didn't even know that was existing. Those things happen. What happens next? You decide! Everyone, check your email. The greatest thing that could ever happen has just happened. The girl who beat you for high school valedictorian died? No. Kevin Cosner requests your presence at Raymond's birthday party. Kevin, Kevin Cosner. Cosner? Is he the star of Dances with the Wolves? <laughs> He's Captain Holt's husband. I bet it's really fancy. Like Beauty and the Beast fancy. Mm -hmm. No, it's probably just an empty white cube with a USB port in it for him to plug his finger in when he's on sleep mode. <laughs> Apparently my husband Kevin has invited you all to my party. There's very little street parking, no gifts, no singing of happy birthday. Should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Huh? Why wouldn't Holt want to stare? Because he thinks we're going to embarrass him in front of his husband. Which, frankly, is insulting. Oh, man. All the orange soda spilled out of my cereal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, adult parties? Sergeant, I believe they're called orgies. No look five. I no met look my wife five. in an orgy. <laughs> well, she was my wife. an orgy, and we bumped into each other on the street. <laughs> we'll meet you. Thank you for exhibiting exactly why this meeting is Scully, I specifically said no shorts. Sarge, it's not my fault. You said so many things about shorts, I got confused. Oh, I spit the pooch. Oh, no. Where have you been? Sorry. Hello, good sir. I'd like your finest bottle of wine, please. That will be $1,600. Great. I'd like your eight-dollarest bottle of wine, please. It's from the finest vineyard in Arkansas. Oh, my oh, my <laughs> <laughs> oh, and look, he brought us some wine. Drink. This is legally called wine drink. <laughs> oh, very thoughtful, thank you. It's red. Like blood. <laughs> Perhaps Raymond didn't say anything. Our home has a no shop talk policy. I don't bring home Beowulf, and he doesn't bring home cop stories. Beowulf. <laughs> so, may I pour you some of this wine drink? Uh, English literature professor? Perhaps all of it? All of it sounds good. <laughs> I know. Actually, Ray and I met over the phone. Oh, they have all heard the story. No, we haven't, and we need to. Well, Ray was a source for an article I was writing for The New Yorker. I asked him a series of dry questions about police work, and his answers had me in stitches. There's no one <laughs> funnier than Ray Holt. Amen. Wait, who's that guy? Oh, dear. What? Uh, what? Well, what happened to your shirt? I spilled a wonderful winter salsa. Here, wear my shirt. I was going to take it off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance he gets? <laughs> Charles, you know everything about food. That's all you talk about. I mean, I don't think anyone will ever know everything about food. It's an evolving discipline. That's great stuff. It's so boring. Don't waste it. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Great humor words, Raymond. You know, it reminds me of a very interesting article I read about human trafficking in don't The New stop. Yorker. The one written by David Remnick. I love that piece from four weeks ago. Or was it three weeks? No, four. Anyways, I was riveted. I'm a huge New Yorker guy. I could talk about that article for hours. Great. That's unnecessary. Kevin, let's greet our guests. Oh. Mm -hmm. Duty calls. To be continued. Totes! Can't wait! I can't wait. All I remember about that article is the title. I was hopped up on nitrous. Well, we gotta find that magazine. It's gotta be in here somewhere, right? This place is like a what candy store. What's the title? Crab? Human traffic. Stop eating crab raw! <laughs> He's eating the whole leg. <laughs> like a corn on the cob. <laughs> yeah. We both have blue hand towels. We have the same microwave. And once I buy coasters made out of geodes, we'll both have those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, hey, my notes. This is a birthday party, not a recon mission. <laughs> you can get this back at the end of the night. Hey. Gino, what are you thinking about <clears throat> right now? I was thinking how I would make the perfect American president based upon my skill set, dance ability, and bloodlust. That is fascinating. <laughs> Ashanti. <laughs> that, she did pretty well with that. I yeah. like that. You must be so proud. I sure am. Well, how long have you two been together? We've been partners for almost 30 years. So do you two ever get harassed at work? Harassed? 
For what? For being a gay couple who works together in the NYPD. Buh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Apparently, based on my previous purchases, they assumed it was fraud. It's crazy. <laughs> Fancy. One time I had coffee flavored ice cream. If you're that desperate, the first two paragraphs of the article are on the free site. Good. You have one minute to look it up. And then if I catch you on that phone again. Oh, oh my. Well, that's Santiago. Do for an upgrade, and my babies are on a cloud. Okay. He is so strong. Jeez. <laughs> So that New Yorker article about human trafficking we were discussing? Mm, yes, so interesting. Especially the first two paragraphs. Right, but what do you think of the thesis vis-a-vis -vis modern slavery and its undeniable role in the economy? Good. <laughs> if you ask me, the whole thesis was way off base vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the article. The article was anti-slavery. Are you saying that slavery is good? You know, I think you're missing the point of the article. You must not be remembering it right. Well, I just read it last night as I got in bed. It's quite fresh in my memory. Oh. You know, I would like to hear more of your thoughts. And I would love to give them to you, but unfortunately, I have got to hit the crap library. Excuse me one second. He knows where it is now. My last meal on Earth. That's a great question. Tiny songbird, eaten in a single bite, bones and all, an open defiance of God. <laughs> it's illegal to consume more at lunch, but I actually got academic dispensation to eat one once. Oh, the <clears throat> beak, very crunchy. That is literally the sexiest thing anyone has ever said. How were you single? You're not seeing anyone? There is nobody in my life. <laughs> sort of a sad thing to wink about, I realize now. <laughs> we know he's an older woman. Doesn't need my help. She's over there dazzling some psychologists. All men are at least 30% attractive. He's there taking notes. I'm so proud the day I was born because she knew she would never be better than me. At any given moment, I'm thinking about one thing. Richard Dreyfus hunkered over, eating dog food. Complete overlap of ego and id. It's been theorized, but I never thought I'd see it. I'm exquisite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn! It was fast. I can't believe I'm Frenching in the closet. I feel like a teenager. I feel like I'm 40 again. Chewing this sheet's a leaf. It'll give her a kissing. Umami flavor. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> so having a great night. Popcorn setting, always too short. Am I right? I'm sorry. On our yep. microwave. He doesn't we have use the same it, right? Microwave. Oh, I didn't buy it. It um, came with Alice. Thomas. Thoughts? I have no thoughts about hummus. If you'll excuse me. Yeah? I have no thoughts about hummus. Blink twice if you'd like me to mercy kill you. I thought I had done enough recon, but clearly I've only scratched the surface. Just don't do recon! <laughs> and I've always considered movies a writer's medium. I can't agree. It's Godard's film. <laughs> Come on. I mean, Truffaut uh, is also important. Seriously? Uh, <laughs> Hold this, I gotta go. <laughs> wow. Maybe it is Truffaut's film. I thought it was great. I DVR, tell me the captain's secrets, unveil yourself to me. Ooh, how it's made. Contact lenses. Theater bone, Sherlock. Bingo! How to make contact lenses? What are you doing here? I, what? I'm not. What are you doing here? I need to find a New Yorker that kept him left by the bed so I can just... Because you just read it last night. Course. I see that you, like I, came up here to chastise Santiago. <laughs> Amy, this is low, even for you. I cannot believe you would both violate the please stay downstairs rule, which was prominently posted. I don't know why we have to have this discussion again. What do we do? Bathroom. Bathroom. I hope it's bathroom. Oh. oh no. Why are you upset with me? Your employees are the ones putting a damper on the party. They are acting terribly. You're the one who's been acting terribly tonight. You've been curt and snobby with my guests. You've been needling poor Peralta so much you practically made him a new suit. <clears throat> Needled him a new suit. Even when we're fighting, you're hilarious. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, no. Dog. Allergies. Easy. Oh. Go. Get away. Shh. Grab the dog. <laughs> that dog looks way bigger in that shot than he did in the first one. Doesn't it look like the Doge dog? It's a corgi. Yeah. You know what? I knew this wasn't going to work. It never has. We should have just gone out for dinner to a restaurant like we do every year. Why did you make me invite them? I made you invite them because I like them. Aww. <laughs> Santiago, are you hiding in my bathroom with a dog that you're deathly allergic to? No. <laughs> oh, no. Occupied? <laughs> <laughs> Mix it up.
<laughs> there were three things that bothered me about last night. You didn't want the 9-9 at your party, even though you'd never met us. Your friends immediately asked Hitchcock and Scully if they were harassed. And there was something interesting about that photo in your library. You and the captain were shunted off to the side. I don't think you dislike cop talk. I think you dislike cops. And I can't imagine it's been fun watching the man you love marginalized, underappreciated, and disrespected by the mm. NYPD. I'd like to make it up to you. Captain, thank you for joining us. What's going on? A proper birthday dinner. Amy chose the restaurant. Captain? I'm sorry about your party, sir. I tried to keep them in line, but I failed. Well, that's not your job. I'm only sorry you didn't get a chance to enjoy yourself. Gina has brought back all the silverware that she stole from your house. <laughs> what? Also this clock. <laughs> this is an hour. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. You're welcome, Kevin. Call me Kev. Oh. oh, he told you to say that, didn't he? Well, you are always playing pranks on me, Raymond. Just once, let me be the funny one. <laughs> and finally, it is my great pleasure to introduce the 99 Zone Detective Scully to serenade you. Oh. No, oh, look at look at Scully. Dumb shorts. This part always gets me. <laughs> you guys met Kevin. Yeah. Well, that was cool because I like. I like that, you know, the, the argument they had up in the bedroom was about, like, them coming over and ruining the party, and they should have just yeah. went to the restaurant and stuff. So, like, Jake's idea is, like, well, let's give them what the idea of what they normally do, yeah. but we, we can't ruin it. Yeah, yeah it, it's great because you make it, it makes you think, one, Holt is embarrassed uh, by the people that he works with. Two, Kevin's just a snob. Three, Kevin loves his husband and hates the people that what they've done to him, you know? So, yeah. It, it really makes sense. It does. I love what Terry, I, I love what Terry's trying to do. I get like no, we're, gonna, we're not gonna embarrass the captain. You know, we're gonna come here. We're gonna be. It's an adult party. There's no karaoke gonna happen. You know, like all this kind of stuff. And eventually, he's like, "All right, stick to your strengths." But I didn't think food knowledge was gonna get boil a date. It did. Yeah. <laughs> More than just that, like she, she was still with him in the yeah, in scene. together. He looked at Rosa. He's like, "You know what? I need to have fun now." Well, yeah. I mean, there's no guarantee that you can't just push off everything when you're like wow that's what i'm after like well, uh -huh. like if, if they have no interest in you you can't just be like after him because then that's stalking it also calls back to another <laughs> moment of him saying that he's perfectly fine looking past age true yeah, yeah. He's, he had that moment where it's like oh yeah oh, oh shit what was, what was the age damn oh yeah remember, remember that the, yeah it's like, like wait 60s we're talking about our earliest arrest you wouldn't have been a police uh <laughs> yeah yeah no uh <laughs> Grand, it was his friend's grandpa or something, wasn't it? Yeah, something. I wrote it down somewhere. but I wrote it down, I think. I don't remember. I don't know where it was. That was a good callback, but the callback that I caught that I've never caught before was in the Thanksgiving episode, the, the nicest thing that he tell, uh, Holt tells uh, Santiago is that your home was very easy to locate. And he says it in a way that's like very compliment, like a compliment. Mm -hmm. And then here, when they get there, he goes, "I hope my home was very easy to locate." Mm -hmm. I never noticed that he did that again. I don't know why that's so important to him. I don't know. <laughs> it's I don't get it. <laughs> but that's really important that it's easy to locate. Also, he complimented their footwear. Yeah. Thank yeah. you all for wearing appropriate footwear. Yeah. yeah. I don't wear sandals, I guess. I also love how funny he is to everyone else yeah. that yeah. he's around, you know? Like, you've been needling him enough, you could have made him a suit. Oh, don't make me laugh now. <laughs> you know? like, the... Dude, Kevin and, Kevin's voice matches his voice so well, I think. It's, like, it's, it it's different enough, but it still has that, like, gravitas yeah. sound to it. Yeah. I know Kevin from something and it's kind of bothering me. I mean, me, he's, like, a, he's a character actor, like, he just, you see him in everything, but he, you know, people will know his name. Yeah. Well, Ooh, I, mean, I think he's in the good place. He might be in the good place. I think he's in the good place. Yeah. I think he's in the good place and he's like a leader of hell or something. I, have, I know nothing about You know the nothing show. about good place, huh? Okay. What's Kevin's <laughs> last name? Kevin Cosner. Cosner. Yeah, not Costner. No. He was the star of Danzas with Wolves, which probably starred Tony Danza, Danza opposite Danza. Of Kevin Cosner. Yeah. That would have been an interesting movie. <laughs> Dancers, dancers with Wolves, yeah. He's played by Mark Evan Jackson. I think he's in The Good Place. But I could be wrong. 
I've been kind of waiting, like, thinking that he was introduced way before this. But yeah. They've only talked about Kevin. Yeah, so. they mentioned Kevin once, or maybe yeah. twice. I like that through trying to seem smart and intelligent, Peralta took a pro-slavery like, <laughs> side. So, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> but what's even more perplexing to me is that he was at the dentist, got high, and saw a title of an article about human... Trafficking. Trafficking, and he was laughing like that. Yeah. What could the title have been? You know? Like, it's ridiculous. Know. Like, it makes me really wonder what the fuck that title was. I mean, it's probably what he said, right? What was the title? Like He just knew it was about human trafficking, right? I, I don't know. I thought he said a title written, and the guy was, like, written by this guy, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if, 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 every time I've ever seen anybody with, like, nitrous oxide, whatever, like, yeah. they're always just laughing. No, I get Anything you. and everything. You're like, human trafficking. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, he just starts laughing. I mean, you know? We literally just that's a had terrible thing. Uh, in Umbrella Academy. Yeah, we did. I feel like I could have bullshitted my way through that conversation. If um, you just if you kind of just agree and let someone talk, you can usually. Well, I felt yeah, like it could have been handled better. Yeah, certainly. You, he needed he needed more information though from yeah. Kevin. He wasn't he wasn't getting it. So you had to give him a little bit of something to try to get something back. Yeah, Instead I mean, I, just I kinda... would just just little things in my head that I've like read or something like being like, oh yeah, I've heard that uh, there's more slaves today than there ever were have been in the history of the world. Well, he like didn't that. say slavery at that point, though, did he? Uh, they talked about human trafficking. Yeah, which but generally he didn't say anything about slavery, slavery. yet. So, like, if he if he knows nothing about it either, I mean, they're not like trading people to sports teams. Human trafficking sure. is slavery, right? I mean, human trafficking is taking people against their will and trafficking them to other places. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going into slavery. You could be well, doing tons of stuff with them. They usually you be taking their organs for the black market. I don't know. They usually can't leave whenever they get there. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not saying they're not being held as held captive or anything like that, too, but yeah. it just depends on what they're doing with them, you know? Because they're also going into sex slave, which is a form of slavery, but then, like I said, what if you kill them, you take their organs, you sell them on the black market, you make money that way. But you still got to traffic it. <laughs> See, right here, we've, we've discussed the, the, the argument. <laughs> Hitchcock and Scully sometimes just have things, and in this uh-huh. episode, Hitchcock's like, I met my wife at an orgy. And like, they're like, what? Well, she was coming from an orgy. It was a meat cute. It's <laughs> like, what? Yeah, like, imagine. How do you meet his dog? He did. That's the thing. I wish, <laughs> I wish we had said the name. So, so we can solve it? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember. Which one's which? What was the name of the dog? I don't know. Kelly. Kelly. Who is Kelly? Kelly? Kelly, yeah. Hitchcock's wife named Kelly. If yeah. it was, what if he named his dog after his wife? Is Hitchcock a nudist? Scully. Scully? No, I don't think Scully. so. I think that he just has that thing, like, right? my shirt never gets... No, Hitchcock always takes off shirt. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I think he just thinks that uh, he doesn't want to get stained on his shirt. I don't know. I don't think it's that. I don't think so. I don't think it's that. No. Every other time he's done it, it's because of, of good, sound reasons. This time was to help Boyle, because he needed a shirt, and he's like, here, I was going to take mine off anyway. Good sound reasons. unrelated to anything. <laughs> but last time was because, here, there's tear gas. You, you use my shirt to cover your good face. Good, sound reasons. There's one that he just had no shirt. He just didn't. Mm-hmm. It was just like eating cake in the break room. He didn't want to get cake on his shirt. Yeah. I, there was, that was one where he's like, I didn't want to get cake on my shirt. <laughs> that was on that. Thanksgiving, I think. That was one, too, where he's like, let's take it. Why do you have your shirt off? <laughs> yeah, he was taking off to not get stains on it. But he just takes it off. What oh, is, yeah. they call it a Oralan? A tiny bird you eat whole bones and all? Yeah. What the, is that a real I thing? I don't know. Maybe. It doesn't sound good. I guess it's just one of those things where you fall down the food rabbit hole and you're trying to... It's like a hummingbird size thing, I would imagine. If, if you can eat it in one bite. Because they said like one bite, right? Two, didn't they? No? Hmm. I don't know. It's just, it's just... You go down too deep the and you have to... Ortolan bird. Ortolans are meant to be eaten feet first and whole, except for the beak, according to the times. But the arguably barbaric preparation isn't why the bird is illegal to eat. They are endangered with a decreasing population. Jesus. What is how, this? how big are they? They gotta be small if you don't. Um, you can like suck them down. Like a hummingbird or something? There you go. There's like a little one like in a pot or something. You know, they talk about like, uh, you know, celebrities are really famous people that it's really easy for them to have sex. So they just have a lot, a lot of sex and eventually they have to like start going on the fringe of, you know, Debauchery. what's acceptable because <laughs> they just don't feel the like. Because normal sex is it's, too. It's, just not, it's not as crazy for them anymore. Yeah. They, need, they need to like get it, they just go crazier and crazier. It's the same thing. Like eating this little baby bird. You know, it's like food doesn't do it for you, so you gotta go out there, you know? And try it, be more adventurous and try yeah. new foods and stuff. Yeah, it's like fucking boil slurping down that hoof that one time. Ugh. You can get the bone marrow out of that. It's like a giant <laughs> toenail. 
Ah. Oh, do you think Boyle and that lady involved food in all of their lovemaking? I, I loved it. I loved it. They already did. <laughs> Put this leaf in. It was great. Like and it swa- I love how it swaps between. He's like, yeah. Good. <laughs> you know, like, it was really good. I wonder, I'm wondering if we'll, that'd be a thing that kind of continues. Because some things we'll have in an episode and it drops and we don't see it again. Yeah. But then some other things will kind of continue for a few episodes. And sometimes, or, sometimes things don't come back for a few episodes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you'll see it and then it's gone and then it comes back. So I'm interested to see if that is a thing that sticks around, comes back later on, or whatever. I don't so. usually enjoy Gina all that much, but I liked her stuff in this one with the psychologist, the psychologist. like fascinated by her. Well, they're like, this funny. woman's crazy. I love it. I gotta learn more about this. I did like that. What is what, what, id? It, uh, id and ego. What is id? Identity. Yeah, it's like... Is it just a way like of it's saying... Like, it's, I think it's the way you look at yourself. Um, yes. Uh, id, psychoanalysis, is the part of the mind in which innate instinctive impulses and primary processes are manifested. Mm. So id is the lower level and ego is the higher level of like gotcha. logic and reason. So ego and id, what did they say ego and id were doing? Um, converged. Yeah, but you never seen them together. Yeah. So they were working together at the same yeah. time, rather than like, so there's the lower logic and the higher logic? Like her subconscious saying? had become egotistical. Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> like her instincts and her desires were completely merged with her rational thoughts. Yeah. Like generally, okay. like someone that's <laughs> very like, like braggadocious, it comes from a lot of insecurity, but hers is true. So the ego would be like her desires and what she thinks that she's capable of or whatever yeah. else. And then the id would be like logically and instinctively what she can do and mm-hmm. does. Opposite. Right? That's, oh, really? That's not ego? It is the instincts. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I, I think that's what I said. I might have said backwards. But so like you just have both of those being one where like now her desires and her instincts are just correlated into I'm going to be the president. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> damn, well, damn, what was her thing? She had something in bloodlust. Uh, yeah, something in bloodlust. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember what the second thing uh, was. Yeah, I don't know. She's, I don't know. She's interesting, and sometimes I like Gina, and other times I'm just like, I've had enough. I, I, I can skip this episode. So. I don't understand why she gets away stealing stuff. Yeah, this right? seems bad. She works with the police. Oh, see something in her. That seems like something you shouldn't let go. This, you know? this isn't ours. <laughs> the clock. <laughs> uh, it's the rush, right? Like, uh, who's the one famous actress that got caught shoplifting, like, really cheap stuff just for the rush? Lindsay Lohan. Katie Holmes or something? Is that right? I don't know. I shouldn't just be saying yeah. things. <laughs> just throwing names out there. Yeah. Eric White. So, of the stuff on the DVR, like there was Bones, Sherlock, how to make contacts. Yeah, make, like how how Like it's how made. it's made? Yeah. Uh, contact lenses. Which of those do you think was for which of them? Like was Holt watching Sherlock or was... Holt must have been watching Sherlock and Bones. If I could definitely see... Whole watching Sherlock and how it's made contact lenses. That seems like something he would watch. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Was it I, just those three things that were mentioned? Th- there were. There was one other thing that I didn't get. There was Bones. There was Sherlock. There was how contacts are made. And there was one other thing that I didn't write down. Hey, hey. Go, go back to it. You got it right there. All right. Yeah, I remember too. They're a happy, happily married couple. They probably watch them together. All right. Damn. Masterpiece theater. Masterpiece mystery. Oh, mystery. I don't even know Bones, what that is. Sherlock. I mean, I can definitely see Kevin doing how it's made contact lenses. Well, I just wonder if Kevin, like, also likes detectives, and that's why he likes hope kind of thing. Maybe. He might like a mystery, right? Like, he likes the classics and stuff. Sherlock is a classic, right? Uh, I wouldn't call Sherlock a classic. Well, it's an old book. (laughs) I don't know. Usually when we talk about classics, you go back a little further than Sherlock. Masterpiece mystery, like, that could fall into some kind of Kevin-y point. Bones, I imagine, would be Holt. It's a, it's kind of a policey thing, yeah. you know, like just police stories, not necessarily book driven. How it's made, contact lenses made. Both of them watch. Well, but like, you can like the classics, and you can also like shitty TV. Yeah, but not if he's already against police. Like he might have more of a connection with Sherlock because of its literature means. Sure, I get you. Right, whereas Bones is like, I don't think it's based on any old books or novels or stories or anything you know it's just I don't know based why. On Sherlock. I feel like Holt would hate Bones you think Holt would hate Bones yeah mm. no you're gonna get adverse reaction to watching Bones isn't there one of the people who has like low emotion in that show or something I don't know I feel like I've seen an episode or two I haven't watched much of it I've seen a lot of it but it's been a long time I thought there was someone in it who has like low emotion so it makes sense that they watch Bones 
if, if that's how it is, you know? I kind of mix all those shows together in my head sometimes. Like, I can't remember who's the medical examiner in that versus NCIS, because they all Ducky. have one. Ducky. Ducky's in NCIS? Ducky's in NCIS. Which one has the goth girl? Ducky's Ducky. assistant. Oh. But she's she's more of the, the techie person, and Ducky's like the, the mm. morgue person. Got it. So, yeah. But they're both in NCIS. So I haven't seen any of those. Uh, dude, I, felt, I watched NCIS. I watched it all the time, and I got stuck at a part when part one happened on NCIS, part two happened on NCIS New Orleans. Ah, the crossovers. Oh. Yeah. And, and Netflix had NCIS, but they didn't have New Orleans. I'm like, well, damn it. And the next episode on NCIS, just everything's back to the status quo. And yeah. I'm like, well, what happened? These people were in danger. Where, what happened to them? So I just stopped watching. What if there's any crossovers with this? I don't know. Boom. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe so you miss out on future episodes. And make sure to check out patreon.com slash blindwave where you can find full length and early access to next week's episode right now. Also, check out in the description below. You can find links to twitch.tv slash blindwave where we stream games, podcasts, and all kinds of stuff every day of the week except for Sunday.